it should be obvious for a movie like this, but spoilers for any for all of you out there, we're gonna like spoil this entire movie. Uh, okay. <laughs> there's no. I wasn't sure I, if we were. Oh, there, to, how like, else would we talk about it? I mean, you you can't can talk about two third, almost two thirds of this movie, uh, without spoiling it. Yeah, without sounding redundant like hey when that when that one thing, thing happened you know that thing that one when joke, that person yeah. died <laughs> when that person you know disappeared and oh man um yeah, i agree with you all right so let's get into it i'm just making jump sure. right oh, into the deep end so here's here's the thing uh one of one of the things that i i that came out today as we're recording this on friday mm -hmm. the 17th is that this movie is the third highest preview opener so meaning thursday night mm -hmm. ever oh man it is going to see look, look, i just want to say something i just want to say david will you get my soapbox out for me allow me to stand on it yes this is what happens when you create what looks like based on the trailers a good movie right yeah and now don't get me wrong i know a that let me <laughs> That's not indicative of how what I think about the movie, but a movie that really isn't filled with well, uh, the agenda. Let's just say it like that, right? Yeah, yeah, the message, the agenda. You're just yeah. trying to make a movie that has a storyline that isn't infiltrated by politics, right? Exactly. It's it's very nostalgia heavy. Yes, it is very very, very nostalgia, nostalgia heavy, heavy. which and is actually pretty Sorry, seems yeah. pretty. I'm not I'm not familiar. With the con like all of the comic books and everything with Spider Man, um, but I used to watch the animated show when I was younger, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I think those were pretty strictly based on the comic books. Uh, and it seems pretty accurate portrayal to this particular version of Spider Man that Tom Holland's plays. Tom Holland plays, and uh, so I would just say that it's going to smash because they didn't do a bad job of marketing. They didn't market, you know, the agenda. They just, hey, this is our movie. Right. All that good stuff. And so that's what happens. This is probably going to be well over a billion dollar movie. Mm -hmm. And it's not surprising. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets close to 300 million by the end of the weekend. I wouldn't be either. Obviously, if you're watching this after that and it didn't make it, oops. But it, you have a $50 million opening weekend where, or open uh, the pre mm -hmm. uh, preview night. The only movies that did better on a preview night were The Force Awakens and Endgame. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. Force Awakens makes sense because people just like they wanted to know. To, yeah, The Force Awakens. They wanted to know it's Star Wars had a huge IP, and people get too overhyped about Star Wars. I get it. Um, there's a lot of fans out there with it, and it's very nostalgia Star Wars. Yeah, and then the Endgame makes sense because you have a ten year run on something and mm -hmm. you finally get the climax of that 10 year run yeah so spider-man it, it it proves a couple things with that and then we'll get into the, yeah that the eternals and shang chi and uh black widow. black widow suck well it's it's one of those things that's like th they can't blame um they, they can't blame the uh the bug Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean, I don't mean like whether you fall on any of that. Sorry, 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 sorry. Dude, sorry. I'm going to put a little thing in there that goes, Joseph goes on a rant about a subject that would get us taken off YouTube, so I can't put this in. And then it's just going to be me going, hey, I can't put any of that on YouTube. <laughs> what I mean is I'm glad it was an escape. Let me say that. I'm glad yeah. it was an escape from our life and didn't have any reflection of what's going on in our world right now. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it was just that's what fantasy is for. Mm -hmm. So let's let's kind of jump into it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I don't know how you felt about where the the movie opened up. Uh, obviously, in the last movie in Far From Home, uh, mm -hmm. it ends with Mysterio dying. Yeah, uh, and and this one it opens up and everybody's like upset about it. And to be on like to be honest. Uh, I, and this is, I mean, I'm going to be very critical of this. Like, I just, I don't mm -hmm. have a choice but but to be. It it didn't work for me. It didn't work for me either. I couldn't Kayla and I talked about it too. Yeah, I couldn't believe that a guy, this this version of Spider-Man, right, who has right. 
endeared, been endeared in the hearts of a lot of people in New York mm-hmm. already, right? He's already had mm-hmm. that first movie. He saved the world from Thanos, right? Right. Um, a random guy who no one is really aware of, except for you know the couple of days that he's in uh, Far From Home, right. says that Spider-Man killed him with Stark technology. And you're telling me half of New York believes that uh, this is actually proof. true? Yeah, and then this guy, like J. Jonah, Jonah Jameson's character in this, just is all head, like, without... And and that's kind of, I guess, really a complaint about... The only complaint I have about his character is that we don't really know what uh, J. Jonah Jameson's motivation is in this movie, other yes. than he's just a jerk. Like he's he, And he hates Spider-Man and for some fine, reason. And it's fine, because uh, what's-his-face's... His portrayal is, like, great. Yep. Um, but it, the whole... Uh, that, that whole thing, like, just from the very beginning, I was watching it, and I was like, I, I can't believe that all of these people would uh, would do that. And then, of course, did you notice the uh, the lady in the crowd who was like, Spider-Man assaulted me? Yes. Uh, I leaned over to to uh, Justin because he was like next to me in the theater, and I was like, of course, it's the large white woman. <laughs> 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 I was like, of course. Um, That's too funny. Yeah, so. That's a good point. I have I, I I made lots of notes, so I'm I'm just kind of curious. Uh, I want to start with the first act, uh, okay? Because I think it's really bad. <laughs> yeah, it's, to break down the first act for people. Uh, Tell them where it starts and where it ends for you. Okay, so I would say from pretty, obviously the beginning, pretty much the start. Yeah. To about the point where they get into Happy's apartment before like one of the major events in the movie. In, in the movie takes place so like yeah. when he takes all of the the villains to happy's apartment yeah yeah that was a bit of a slog for me like i it wasn't the worst thank you yeah. it wasn't the kayla worst. felt the same way she brought it up to me before i even brought anything up she was like i wanted to leave and up until like for her it was up until the big fight between um, oh, that, uh, you you know what happened with his aunt, um, right? Well, because I would say, I could strange before that she was like, it was so boring. I I was fine with the stuff with Strange for the most part. Um, mm-hmm. I, I had I made little notes about like all of the different uh, actors and how I kind of felt about them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the first act uh, they didn't deconstruct Strange, which was nice. But, but uh, nice, but first act, go ahead. Yeah, he um. So yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't work for me. The whole like setup is sort of it's like what it's it's like whatever. Like they didn't really think too mm-hmm. much about what they were doing with it, and the it didn't spell seem like do, the, yeah the spell doesn't work. But then it partially works, even though he says he locked it away. Um, and then his motivation. The craziest thing about like the setup is that if he had just done nothing, right? Like if he had never gone to see Strange, mm-hmm. everything would have just been fine. Yeah, for the most part. Yep. And it, and it, it well, I, I say that in the sense that like, it it feels like at least the way that it was written, everyone would have gotten over it because everyone yeah. gets over it the minute that Ock Doc Ock comes on the scene. Yep. Like he as soon he as help, he does he helps his friends, which is great. Like they, but they, this is what I'm saying. They they wrap up that whole act like all of these weird threads that are like, oh no, he's not getting into MIT. Oh no. Um, some agency is upset with him. It was like yep. unclear who they were. Uh, I'm sure that if if you're like a massive Marvel comic book fan, you might know that agency or whatever. Um, but they do this whole thing, and then Matt Murdock shows up for two seconds, and I I oh, went, <clears throat> yeah. So I had two two thoughts on that. Dude, when he came in, yeah, the, everyone in the, the movie theater goes ah and starts <laughs> clapping, and I'm like. I turn to Kayla. I'm like, it's jangling are keys, we just man. in it's in a movie keys. with kids? I mean, grown <laughs> men over here screaming because they see an actor on the screen. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. Daredevil's in the movie. I'm gonna hyperventilate. Well, like was... little girls screaming screaming at Justin Bieber concert. <laughs> Sorry, it happened so much throughout the movie to where it would they would do it for so long it would cover the dialogue. Well, that'll be an interesting comparison because my audience was surprisingly tame. Like people, and went... I'm in a red state. <laughs> Oh, dude, oh man, dude! People in the theater, uh, it was so interesting. They they were kind of like 
ooh. And and I, I sat there and I went, oh, okay, so he is in it. Like, that's all I, I was like, oh, okay. Because I had heard rumors that he, he might be in the movie. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. And then like, it doesn't, it doesn't like, go anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere. Which is that's disappointing. It. And yep. it's kind of disappointing. But on the other hand, I was thinking about it today. And I went, you know, if all this is is just a recognition of that and they never hopefully do anything with it, that's fine. It's completely mm-hmm. fine. Like, don't touch Daredevil. Let it be what it was. You don't have to make another movie with him. I prefer you didn't because after, like, Netflix handled it very well. Mm-hmm. And unless, Surprising. yeah, unless they were going to make a season four that was rooted in that and they were able to be, like, as violent and, uh, I guess, gritty, if you will. It's like that, that street level hero stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want it because it's just going to be sanitized Disney garbage. Yep. And he deserves, like, Daredevil deserves better than that. Um, so, yeah, that, that happened. Um, and I guess it, it was a, it was humorous when he, like, grabs the brick as it's, like, if it, as it comes through the window. And they're all kind of like, how, how did you do that, right? But, of course, it's never brought up again. Yep. Um, and it, it is a little disappointing. It's a filler I, scene. Yeah. You know? I kind of wish they had, like, this is the thing that's kind of odd about this movie and i i don't know i'm was there anything else in that first act that you can think of that i i was the this the scene where uh spider-man and strange are fighting in the mirror dimension is like fine i guess it yeah yeah, most of it was go ahead i was gonna say most of it you see in the trailer yeah most of it you see in the trailer and i thought it was fine i was kind of surprised how um he ended up being stuck there. I'm like, really? That's what happens to the Sorcerer Supreme <laughs> and everything? Like, oh, he gets tricked like that. Like, yeah, I thought that was just convenient, like plot com- convenience. Sure. I, I and I also think that before leading up to that, that the whole the whole spell, like you mentioned, and then at the same time, how that box and how if you just push this button, everything resets. Right. I just felt like all that was just way too illogical yeah. and convenient. And then, especially when you have, like, that button doesn't get pushed in the in, in their entire scramble at all when it falls many times. <laughs> Spider Man does his web at it, just things like that, right? And, there, and, and again, yeah. these are things. Listen, people don't understand my wife when she does a movie review. I'm like, okay, that's what you think. Okay, okay, okay. I hear you. I disagree, but I hear you. like, <laughs> like she's really liberal. Um, or generous, I should say, generous mm-hmm. with her movie reviews, right? She's typically uh, more compassionate to those who make movies. Um, and so when she brought this up, I was like, I was really surprised. I'm like, first off, I'm so thankful that you've been listening to me uh, <laughs> talk about Marvel movies and stuff. Secondly, I'm glad this was you know, your own opinion you came from and you saw the same things I did. And I'm not just like, am I the only one seeing this in the movie theater? <laughs> Because I talked to my, I got my haircut today and talked to my hairdresser and she was at the, there's only one movie theater here where I live. Right. So she was there last night and she was like, didn't you just love the movie and everything? I'm like, I mean, it was okay. Yeah, that's kind of, I've been like, uh, I, it was an okay movie. Yeah. I, if someone I, says it's decent, if somebody, if somebody thinks that it's a nine out of 10 movie, that's not going to like, oh, that's, a, I mean, because well, there were, me. yeah, there were a lot of people that I generally agree with the things that are like, oh, from a nostalgia tam- standpoint, it's like an, it, it's, it rates very highly for me. And I was like, yeah, I mean, there were some moments that I was like, wow, cool. But I still couldn't get over all of the weird uh, conveniences that, that yes. happened throughout the movie. And to be honest, like I can I understand the uh, the strange uh, Spider-Man fight. I'm totally fine with that. I, there's an argument for why Spider-Man can beat strange. Uh, mm-hmm. like one on one, um, and they they it's it's enough, right? I mean, especially within right. the logic of like current Marvel, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, the so the first act not great, um, and then <laughs> it, it's it's odd because you know Peter saves Doc Ock, mm-hmm. right? Oh, we wait, can we talk about the jokes real quick yes, before I, I was... get into that? It yes, was like please. like I don't know how you felt about it, but for me it was like fifty fifty. It was it was all of the stuff from the trailer didn't land, and it didn't land with mm-hmm. anyone in the theater. There were like slight awkward chuckles, 
Jeez, you had jokes. a more mature audience than apparently <laughs> I did. I'm, I promise you, dude, it was all adults in there and stuff, and people were just, I'm like, laughing at every single thing, Ooh. and I'm like, guys, it's not that funny. No, I, and that was what <laughs> like, was so interesting. That's one thing, you know, my keeper mentioned as well is that, you know, like most of the jokes weren't funny. I didn't, I don't, I probably was a, probably an hour into the movie before I laughed at one of the jokes. Yeah, I'm trying to to remember. I don't think what it was the, even fifty fifty for me. I think there was only like well, I'm just on one hand up, jokes that I laughed at. I, I'm just splitting it up because I don't think I started laughing till about the last half of the film, and I, that's me. Yeah, same. Put, trying to put a number on it, like I can't tell you yeah, for sure. Um, right. And we'll get into some of the later the later stuff soon because I'm I'm trying to keep it semi organized by like the progression act of the movie. Act one, act yeah. two, act three. Um. So anyway, uh, none Peter, of the jokes land. Peter saves Doc Ock, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's like a, a big fight in the uh in Happy's like apartment building or whatever because mm-hmm. the uh uh the goblin Norman uh betrays everyone. Right. And it, it was pretty good. I mean like I don't uh it was sort of the the weirdest thing is that, that it was like Doc Ock gets saved and then he gets like uh, he goes out of the building, right? He doesn't get tossed out, does he? And I, it's, it, I can't quite remember. But anyway, he ends up like outside of the apartment building and kind of just yeah, is he gone. Yeah, he got tossed out. Like he just leaves the movie until the, the third act, like the beginning, like almost the end of the Yeah, it doesn't show him land act. or anything like that. Yeah, it shows well, him like what, stop on the building and then that's it. He kind of, yeah, he climbs up a little bit and then they cut to something else. Um, So I guess the, the important thing at this point is that... uh. Goblin kills Aunt May, kinda. Yeah. Were you so? I don't know how you felt. It was about, weird, right? It would. It didn't make a lot of sense because they have. He throws the bomb, right? It blows mm-hmm. up. Both Peter and May look like they're fine. Yeah, I noticed that and, too. And they're both walking weird. around and talking for a couple minutes, and then all of a sudden she's like, "Oh!" And she like it falls down, and he has like blood on his hand or whatever. Uh. And you're like, oh. Um, also, that line, the with great power or with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, dude, it was not good. <laughs> it didn't work for me at all. It didn't work it for felt, me either. It felt so forced. Yeah, it did. So contrived and forced. It was. One I the- do think Tom Holland did a great job in his acting there, in sure. uh, in his grief and displaying that. I think he, it's probably one of the best portrayals of grief in the. Um, in any Marvel movie I've seen, oh, um, other okay. than I think uh, I think Andy Garfield had a good one. What's that? <laughs> that's I, that. That's just not something that I generate. It's num- number one, the top grief moment. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I just I just the ones that I recollect. Uh, yeah, I can remember right, and because there is you know a lot of sadness and stuff, and in a lot of their movies, and I just I don't. I remember like, okay, I can actually feel this and, and relate. And then I'm like, that's a, that's a good portrayal. And the last time I could remember feeling like that is with uh, Andrew Garfield when he tried to save Gwen and I uh, didn't. And so, and everything. But yeah, so other than that, yeah, no, it was strange to me because, you know, the building cl- collapsed if some. And I was like, okay, well, this is probably going to be the part where, you know, she dies. Um, and then she, she's fine until the green goblin hits her, you know, his scooter hoverboard. And, uh, but then that doesn't kill her. Right. He did hit her with it. Right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's what I thought. And then he tosses his pumpkin grenade. Um, (laughs) yeah. And then she, like they get up and they're walking around and then I'm like, okay, so she's fine. And then it's like, Oh no, she's not fine. And it's not the first time in the movie that something similar to that happens where it's like uh you remember the the part where he runs into Sandman for the first time and like Sandman's on his side for about 2 minutes and then Sandman yes. does that, like one thing that he does. Like mm-hmm. he seems like, "Oh, Peter, I'm here to help." And then he helps him and then immediately he's like, "Wait a second." And then it, he has this immediate switch. And it was like, "What I literally was in the theater going, what is going on right now? <laughs> oh, man. It, it, it was kind of funny because Sandman ended up uh, 
Yeah, I don't want to spoil too much. I know I kind of did just talking about Aunt May, but I am trying to do a better, a good job. Uh, like, how can I word this? Uh, yeah, no, I know what you mean. I'll just say that I was kind of confused as well. It was, There's an instance where he's kind of, uh, it's kind of confusing some of the choices he makes, yeah. and you know where he ends up being. So, yeah, he at the end of the movie. So I would say he and the lizard were very underutilized in this movie to the point yes. that you, you probably could have left him out. And what's interesting, so I was thinking about this after the movie was over, um, based on uh, one of the uh, after credit scenes, they could have just put Venom in this movie and like not put Sandman and not put uh, the lizard, right? He mm-hmm. could have easily taken the place of both of them, and I actually think it would have been a more entertaining movie. It would have been a lot better if they would have just replaced Sandman and... Uh, like have have venom Blizzard and yeah. just have venom be, have be venom, it and then venom be a it could be the venom or... from toby's world i guess no would it be I, no i think yeah. you should well because tom hardy like tom hardy's ah, there that's right he's just yeah, he's just right. he's there for like <laughs> a minute and then he's i guess gone. you don't want to like, be what? trophy grace back as venom uh, no not at all <laughs> the less of that specific movie the comes back i think the better i was actually su- i really wanted emo toby back i know i was surprised <laughs> that there wasn't a reference to that of all Dude. of all of the stuff that they kind of reference in the movie uh, from the from the old ones, that was one thing that I was like, I cannot believe they didn't do that. That yeah, was right. that was sitting on like a, a, a silver platter for them to just take, and somehow like he didn't like. Obviously, at this point, it, we should say like Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are both in this movie. Um, yep. And uh, I'm surprised that there wasn't like a finger guns moment with Toby. You know what I mean? Oh, or like a yes. hey, like just want some little thing that's a reference to some that. It doesn't nod. have to Yeah, it didn't have to take up a lot of time. It's it's honestly shocking to me. Um right, yeah. So uh, Aunt May dies, Peter becomes sad boy, and yep. then that's when um it's revealed that Toby and uh Garfield have been here the whole time doing what? Who By the knows? Way, like they he they find Andrew Garfield wandering around in an alley, <laughs> and Tobey Maguire came from. Did he was he was he in the Sanctum? Could you tell? I couldn't quite tell. Uh, I couldn't where quite tell from. either. But it's like, what were these guys doing? <laughs> There's. I don't think they really fleshed that out too well. No, and that is that's probably a big criticism I have is that they should have not done as much with the villains. Cut down mm. the number of villains spend more time with the three of them even though i think toby yep. mcguire's acting in this was was not it was kind of wooden yeah. i would say wooden might be a good a good descriptor of it but isn't that kind of his character in no he's he's the... definitely got more range in okay those are spider-man those original spider-man movies you know they're campy yeah. it's got kind of this like fun feel to it right like they're not taking mm-hmm. themselves too seriously all the time yeah um but he just felt kind of wooden, um, and that was one of the problems I had with him, Jamie Fox, Marissa Tomei, who plays uh, Aunt May, mm-hmm. and I, was there anybody else? They, oh, and, and uh, uh, Cumberbatch. The, all of them kind of felt like they were yes. phone, phoning in their roles a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like this was I, Marissa Tomei. Obviously, this is her last movie, so it's just like, well, she's here for the paycheck. Um, yeah, and she did okay. There were some, a couple decent moments with her. You think it's more so just the writing? Because I always feel with something like that. No, like, it's you, the that, it's the acting. Because there's you think a, the acting a, in that one. Yeah, when you're really putting put it. Because that's the thing. Here's the interesting thing. Uh, this is like the first movie I've seen where Zendaya hasn't driven me insane. Yeah, I was gonna say she because did. she wasn't just like normal Zendaya that has no emotion. Yeah, her in, her has, acting was a lot better. Yeah, she had like. Uh, emotions coming off of her face from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Like, it was really funny because the movie starts with the two of them together. And I was like, oh, she can act. I was like, this yeah. is kind of interesting. <laughs> I was like, she she's smiling. She seems happy. I was like, I I've, I haven't seen this before from from Zendaya. So, uh, yeah, I yeah, the, the the acting from most of the cast ranges from like good to uninterested. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, w- I wouldn't necessarily say anyone's is just like god awful. Like there's nothing in it that I'm just like, oh my gosh, like why why do they handle yeah. it like this? Um there are moments I think um Andrew Garfield uh f- 
seems he seemed off. I don't know if you felt that way, but he seemed off to me. Yeah, it, it felt that way with me as well. I noticed that in most of the scenes with him, it seemed this it just seemed off. It he, didn't um, seem cohesive. There were moments where you're like, oh, okay, this is the Andrew Garfield that I remember. Yeah. Um, and then there were moments where he was acting kind of like not spastic, but like just extra weird for no reason. Yeah, and it is because don't get me wrong, I like Tobey Maguire. I know people love him as Spider Man, um, but Andrew Garfield was uh, my favorite. Is my favorite out of the three. My favorite it's, actor. It's too bad this um, movie suck. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I just think like he did a great job acting as Spider Man. Um, I always um, like Peter Parker. I haven't seen him in a long time, but I do remember liking his relationship with Gwen Stacy. Yeah, like I I remember preferring that over any of the other stuff that was going on in those movies. Um, I never I never really liked Kirsten Dunst and uh, Spider Man. You know, a lot of people don't. A lot of people really don't like uh, her most of the time, and that it's unfortunate. We still haven't really gotten like a good Mary Jane. Like she's supposed to be yeah a very attractive, very confident woman. Like that's kind mm-hmm. of like who she is. And you kind of get that with uh, Kirsten Dunst, but I, I think a lot of people just didn't like the way she was portrayed. Um, yeah. And that's that's the interesting thing about, you were asking earlier about whether it's just the writing or the acting. Um, a lot of it seems like the acting, because there are moments, right, where uh, Tobey Maguire and um, Andrew Garfield um, and Tom Holland all seem like they're having a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and then there's moments where one of them's talking, and I'm like, ah, like what? Like what went wrong there? Why does that? Why is that? It just it felt weird. Um, but they're you know I love all I, their interaction at the end of the movie where they're all like talking about like when they're talking about like Toby's web slingers. And yeah. Like, How did you do that? <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, Dude, especially Kayla didn't laugh at that line <laughs> that he said. By time. She's yeah, like, that's yeah. the only line I didn't laugh at that you laughed at. I'm and, like, come um, on, that was funny. It's just not her cup of humor sure sometimes, sure sometimes but like they're like asking he's like do you do you make them and he's like it's like breathing and i don't what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> so i thought that was that stuff was really good too good um, i definitely predicted at the end when uh he stops goblins uh toby stops uh goblins uh glider yeah Oh, yeah. that was easy to predict. <clears throat> well, then, we um, and we were right about the whole trailer thing where they just scrubbed them from a couple of the yep. scenes. We were uh, right about I think that. Every, I think everybody knew that that was kind of the case. I was um, also right about Andrew saving uh, yes. Michelle. Oh, that's a really good point. Um, yeah, so Andrew Garfield gets his redemption moment. His Spider-Man mm-hmm. does. That worked for me. I, I was yeah. actually surprised how well it worked for me where like <laughs> he catches her, right? And they're standing there and he's like, are you okay? She's like, yeah, and then she's like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good. And I, and I think everybody in the theater was like, <laughs> I didn't like, really feel it. It hit for me. No, it hit, it hit for me because I, I still don't, like again, I don't like those movies, but the sentiment of having a character who failed to save someone that he mm-hmm. loved, and then to find it, it's just, it's a nice, uh, it's, it's a nice payoff that I think yeah. no one thought that a, they were ever going to get. Even though it didn't hit for me, I do feel like it was a good payoff for the character. I will agree with that. Yeah. Um, I will say this too: the second half of the movie, or at least up until the moment of them getting the Happy's apartment and Goblin betrays them, yeah, um, that saved the movie for me. Because up until that point, it was kind of <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know how this is gonna work, and I, yep, I started the thinking the last half of the movie really picks up. Yeah, it does. Uh, it and that that's what's odd is that. It almost feels like two separate movies. Yeah, it does. I've heard, I've heard some people say three movies, but I think you could split it almost right down. Well, you could have like you have the first act and then everything that comes after that. Yes. And it's definitely where it starts picking up, and you know you get sort of a more traditional Spider-Man movie. Mm-hmm. That's when like the jokes start landing a little bit better. You know, you get your your villains. Um, everything is finally. It just takes so long to build up to, yep. um, and that a lot of filler. In the yeah, movie. that was one of my bigger criticisms: is that the script just isn't tight. It does. Yep. It, it feels like they, they were like, "Well, we have to put all this in there," and I'm like, "Yeah, we have to reach two hours and fifteen minutes." Yeah. And like, guys, you could have easily cut off thirty minutes, well, you know, and it'd have been a lot better movie. They didn't have to introduce all the villains. 
Like, it felt very systematic in the way they were doing it, and it didn't feel like it flowed very well, where it's like, okay, we have the beginning of the movie. Everything picks up. Spider-Man's in trouble because everyone knows who he is. Then he goes and sees Doctor Strange to try to fix that. Then, or, like, the spell messes up, uh, and then the villains start showing up. Okay, we have to introduce all the villains before we get to the part where we introduce Toby and uh, Garfield, yes. right? Who which have been there all along. Yeah, for some Doing. reason, and yeah, it, it makes no sense. <laughs> like, and you're, you're talking about characters that, you know, they are for all from New York, right? Mm-hmm. They understand New York. New York exists yep. in all these places. So when you have an incident happen, like what happened at um, that building, right? Mm-hmm. They should have probably known it. What there was literally lightning raining down around the building at one point, and explosions yep. going off, and a giant sand person. Right? You would think that these two other Spider Men would know that this was going on, right? Uh, Especially with the spider sense and everything like that. Yeah, but they are too busy wandering around in alleys or something. <laughs> it doesn't make something sense. going on. Oh man. Um. Bum. 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 Uh. That. Okay, let's see. Was there anything else, like in particular? So liked the or movie disliked? A, yeah, that yeah, disliked. Yeah. Um, I can't really think off the top of my head right now anything that I disliked, other than what we've already spoken about. Um, so I mean, okay. I think they could have shaved off thirty minutes, as I just sure. literally just said, and it would have been a far better movie. I think. That oh, this is what I was gonna say. I think you hit. You said earlier that they should have done less villains and done Venom instead of Sandman and Lizardman. Yeah, I agree with you. Either go that route, and then highlight more. I th- I think it would have been a far more effective script and movie if they would have highlighted Toby and Andrew a lot more mm-hmm. it, within the script, and they were there for a lot longer. But. If you don't want to do that, then you're going to do these other villains. Why not try and do more like a Sinister Six? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and just like, you know, I know it's like, well, now you're adding more villains. Well, I'm like, well it's at not least even, it would make. The only reason it, it, it would be tough to do that is because it wasn't really the point of what they were trying to do. No, it wasn't. You wasn't. know what I mean? It's like if they they're had brought in. the whole in, multiverse thing. Well, yeah, and the nostalgia thing where it's like these are yeah. all characters that are very recognizable from past movies. Um, yep. Some some more beloved than others, but that was that's really the point that they were they were kind of going for. And you kind of yeah. I mean like you don't get a Sinister Six, but you get something like it in that like vein. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think they could have cut out a lot of the villain stuff, and it would have been better. Just to, like I think I would have enjoyed. Really, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I think you're you hit the nail on the head. If Sandman and Lizard Man aren't in the movie. Right, it's still a good movie. Yeah, they're like like it's still the same type of movie, if not better, because it's not like there's that hugeness for me at least, and maybe other people can correct me or have a different opinion, and I just don't understand. But I don't feel like there's that huge of an attachment to Sandman and Lizard and, Man. And the Lizard, yeah, I specifically the Lizard Man, right? Um, probably both, because Sandman's from Spider Man Three, which is the movie that no one, yeah, likes for the most part. I'm sure there are contrarians out there who are like, no, it's so good. It's like, it's not a good movie. Right. Um, and then, yeah, the, anything coming out of Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, people like things about those movies, but I, I don't know anyone that would, well, I'm sure they're out there. There are definitely some people that would probably try to argue that those are better movies, but it's that's more of a, a either a nostalgia thing or just not yeah. really under. you know, they're looking at like kind of the jangling keys of, right. of the whole thing rather than actually breaking down like why these don't work very well um but yeah i i it would change up a couple scenes but i th- man it, well that's you, happy too i think would have been fine that would have been fine too, too if you you would if have you had, wanted to highlight venom more and then uh all three spider-man well yeah and you could have had i don't want to get too much into like could have been's but yeah you could have had Venom play some sort of role in it as going from like villain to sort of like anti-hero by the end of it or whatever mm-hmm. um, or a very, just straight up make him kind of like the villain of the movie for whatever reason yeah um, I think he would have been a better villain than the uh, Green Goblin personally it, it could have been more interesting well this is the problem is that the again this is the same problem that Spider-Man 3 had back in the day there's too many characters 
and mm-hmm. so no one gets enough time to have real development. I mean, right? Uh, Holland Spider Man gets a decent amount. I mean, he has like a a very much like beginning beginning middle and end, um, which yeah. I do want to talk about. I want to talk about the the ending of the movie. Um, but everybody else, it. everybody else is just sort of like at, at different points. They all kind of just get pushed aside to keep the movie well, moving forward, and you just. Like yeah. they they kind of start doing something with Norman, right? Where it's like, no, I don't want to be right. this person anymore. But then you know he betrays them and moves on. Um, Sandman right. doesn't really change it at, at all. <laughs> and, and nope. He, and he's just like, I don't trust people. And then that's who he is through the whole movie. And then they save him, and he never has a moment to say anything again. Like there's no, nope. you know what I mean? And it's actually the same way with Jamie Fox. Same way yep. with the lizard. Um, Doc Ock has a kind of a decent arc but at the same he time he has a redeeming arc yeah but at the same time they all it's disappear not yeah they all disappear at the end of the movie and you're like okay that's that, the part that's yeah. it I, I can get on board with them not having a ton of time in the movie um each individual character because you already have their character development in the previous movies no so no, I no, no, how- no 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 i i cannot get behind that that is that's lazy writing <laughs> That is absolutely lazy writing. I disagree with you. We're no, at that is absolutely lazy writing because they're what they're doing is they're using nostalgia and then they bring all these characters in and you're like, well, they've already been developed in other movies. <laughs> well, they, and it's like those yeah. were their those are their arcs in those movies. I agree with you. I agree with you. Don't don't hear what I'm not saying. I agree with what you're saying. I get that. Okay, so I'm the prerequisite of this movie is that you have to go watch seven other spider Yeah, movies. that's that's bullcrap. No. Uh-uh. And so, again, I think it kind of, because they're relying on the nostalgia factor, it kind of works for me. But at the same time, I agree with you, it kind of does it. They could have fleshed that out a little bit more, maybe have less, maybe even don't even do Venom and just have, you know, again, those other vil- villains or the villains that are in the movie minus Sandman and Lizard Man and then focus more on uh, all three Spider-Men or add Ven- Venom, whatever. But so I agree with you. They could have fleshed all of that out a little bit more. But specifically, regardless of what they chose to do, I think in the end it doesn't make sense to where you don't have anything from Jamie Foxx, um, Electro, from, or from Lizard Man or from Sandman, right? Yeah. Well, and they would not have had much to, of anything from Green Goblin either. They should have had. Nah, you got it. I mean, like you would have had to have kept. It, it could have gone a direction of having one villain per, mm-hmm. right? Um, or you have like Doc Ock. You have probably uh, Electro, and then you bring in like Venom or whatever to like just like fill act. in that gap. No, I mean just like per hero. Hero, yeah. right and so they all have something that they're trying to overcome um, yeah that electro, makes more sense right yeah electro makes sense just because uh oh, oh well you know what i mean it's been so long since i've seen amazing spider-man 2 goblin is it hot hobgoblin is in that movie isn't he is he let's see i am go ahead keep talking i'm pretty sure that hobgoblin shows up because that's the whole thing with gwen stacy the whole thing is that he gives yeah uh, he gives him a choice you're right then, he saves everyone, and then he's trying to save Stacy or Gwen Stacy, and uh, catches her, but her neck breaks. Yep. I forgot he was in that movie. <laughs> I forgot too. That's funny. Uh, that, mm-mm. Yeah, that not he did fan. not look good as Hobgoblin. Yeah. I think no, they did a bad pretty, it's pretty character good. design. It's, just, it's not very good. Um. So yeah, I mean, there's plenty of things that they could have done. Um, it's that was a smart decision, not bringing him. In this. Yeah, well, <laughs> and then they couldn't bring James Franco in because he's no longer uh, he acceptable. Got, well, yeah, he got me too. <laughs> yeah, and, and um, from what it seemed like, rightfully so, though. Yeah. Uh, the um, okay, so let's talk about the ending. How do you feel about them? Sort of like, I mean, essentially just resetting Spider-Man. Yeah. So. It's more in from from what I've heard from, from what I've heard about other people who are into the storyline. It followed the more it was faithful to the source material. This version of Tom Holland. So I can I kind of get I, I I liked it. I'll say I liked it because it gave him a sacrifice for the greater good. So character development there. Even you know you have that with May, but I see May as more so of almost breaking him, right? For sure. And then having to sacrifice everyone knowing him for and becoming uh i feel like he's already selfless but um having to to sacrifice make a great sacrifice like that 
I, I think it worked for me because yeah. Marvel had in phase four, they haven't done a good job of having any of that. So it worked for me. <laughs> Although at the same time, it was like, I don't know exactly how I feel about it too. So in a way it worked for me. I don't want to, I'm not trying to sit on the fence. It worked for me. No, I'm I on that you. side of the fence. Yeah. But this, at the same time, I understand the point of why are they resetting it? You know? Well, it was really funny because right I, now, because it was kind of, uh, go ahead. I was saying, I leaned over to um, Justin when we saw this mm-hmm. yesterday, and I was like, oh, look, it's so nice and tidy for Sony to take Tom Holland back as Spider Man now. Because, um, well, because the rumor was supposed to be his last one, but I think they're trying to work out more deals, um, mm-hmm. which I'm sure Sony is more than obliged to let um, Marvel help them make a lot of money. Um, yeah, especially with this one. Yeah, so I, I'm fine with the reset. I think it works. Um, the ending works pretty well for me because, weirdly enough, it, the sacrifice, he, this thing, him sacrificing his two best friends mm-hmm. um, for their, what he believes to be is like their, bet that what will be better for them. Uh, their best, best for them. interest. Yeah, yeah, excuse yeah. Me. exactly. Their best interests. Um, it, it works because you're actually starting to see him mature. Yes. Because he's had all of this time where, you know, Tony was his mentor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then he has a whole thing with, like, Mysterio. And so he's kind of been drug along in a lot of these movies. Um, and then this and is... Say the same iteration of the character in all the movies. Sure, yeah. He hasn't had... I, he's had some growth, right? Like, right. I, it's been a while since I've watched the other two, but I'm sure if I went back, you, I'd be able to, like, point out little moments here and there. Like, I can think of one where... Uh, in the first one where he gets um, uh, stuck under rubble uh, towards the end of uh, Homecoming. And Mm -hmm. it's kind of this moment of him, like, he starts freaking out, uh, and then he has to kind of, like, overcome this moment or whatever uh, in order to kind of, like, grow as a character, right? It's like this this moment of struggle that he has to overcome. And you kind of get that in the second one, but I I don't really like that one that much. Homecoming is kind of whatever. Or not Homecoming, uh... God, these far movies, from home. far from home, uh, it's it's whatever you know. It's kind, it's of the three. It's definitely the most forgettable. Um, I, I was telling I was telling somebody today because they were like, "Oh, I haven't seen the second one." I was like, "Honestly, I was like, you can probably skip it, and you're not going to miss a whole lot." Nope. You know what I mean? It's like you can fill in enough of the gaps that that second movie is almost unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it works. I'm I'm interested to see what they're going to do next. Um, and how much it's going to actually matter that no one remembers Peter Parker? Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, it's also well, a little no one does. Yeah, it's also a little sketch because when you start really thinking about that, it's like, okay, so if no one remembers you, do you have a social security number? Like, yeah. do you, you know, what happened yeah. with like your bill, like bills? Like, how are you gonna how how did you manage to rent an apartment in New York if no one knows yeah. who you are? Like, what? And so, again, it's one of those things that there's so much going on in this movie that it sacrifices the little bit of detail that makes it that would have made it work even better for me. Yeah. Because <laughs> even, um, man, what were you saying a minute ago? I can't even remember. It's it's not that important. But there's there's lots of detail that kind of just gets sacrificed for the sake yep. of we have to get through this almost two and a half hour movie. Um, it's like characters, characters, characters. Yep. Uh, but nah, but. Go ahead. I will give whoever made the decision not to put a joke in immediately after Aunt May died uh, some sort of kudos. <laughs> it was nice to see that there was a tiny bit of uh, pullback on the every somber moment uh, immediately yes. followed by a joke. So um, my, I think my last criticism for the movie is that it felt too much like a comedy to me than a – Again, not that you can't have funny moments, but more right. of a serious uh, comic book movie. Um, but I mean, other than that, that's you know pretty much my last thoughts. I mean, yeah. I, I enjoyed pleased. the ending; mm-hmm. was good. In credit scene, stay form. I think they're really good. But I do think the movie would have been better served, and probably would have created a lot more fanfare had. Venom been in it other than Sandman and Lizard Man. Right, well, yeah, Venom shows up in the after credits scene for five seconds just yes. so that they can be like, oh, he left some of the symbiote in your world. And I was like, that's dumb. 
<laughs> I was like, that's dumb. Just have the have it exist in space like it does in every yep. version of Spider Man. Yep. Why does it I have agree. to be that's that's contrived. Yep, that's that's convenient. completely like oh because if it if he erased gonna, that venom, it wouldn't it it be all take, of it. Yeah, well that's the thing, is it should have <laughs> taken all of it. Yep. It's it's goofy the yeah. I, and that's again, this is kind of the problem with modern Marvel for me, is that it's it's like, ugh, all right. I mean, I see how you did that. It's like, but it feels really lazy. Yeah. It's like, ugh, man, I don't know. But hey, I, you know, uh, it's probably uh, what, what would you say the the second best movie of Phase Four behind Eternals? Oh yeah, definitely behind <laughs> Eternals. Definitely. I mean, who can compete with that? That's probably the best MCU film. I'm ever right. I mean, how could ever. you? You know, how could you? Uh, the best one. Yeah. 10 out of 10. In the face of all that diversity, how could you say that it's not? <laughs> exactly. Um, no, I think it's it's clearly the best thing that they've put out since probably Endgame. I'm trying to think. Oh, of, it definitely is since right? Endgame. Yeah. Because Far From, not, Far From Home came out after that, and then they took a mm-hmm. break, and that's when we started getting Loki uh, and, and like all the TV. Phase 4, Black yeah. Black Widow. Um, all the, yeah, yeah. I, by far and away better yes. than everything else that's come out. Yes. Um, man. Don't waste your time and go see Eternals. You Just don't completely need to. ignore that movie. You can, Just completely yeah. ignore it. You can completely ignore that movie, and I guarantee it's not going to make that big of a deal. Those characters okay. are. Sh- those characters will probably show up in other things later on, and you'll go, oh, okay, who's that? And you're like, oh, okay, it was from that movie I didn't watch. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> that useless movie. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. But yeah, I would. I mean, I think I'd recommend it. I've been telling everybody, if you like Spider Man and you've liked Spider Man for the last twenty years or whatever, Go you're see gonna it. like this movie. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. it's fun. It's it's very nostalgia driven, and you're not gonna feel like it was uh, a total slog. Um, so we're gonna rate this on a Marvel scale. For me, if you don't want to, don't no, worry about it. No numbers. I don't do eighty five for me. Eighty five. That seems high. I was going to say 80, 80 to 85. <laughs> I'm making you bring your number down. No. It, hey, no, listen, no, no. that's your number. I was really going it's to say number. 80. It's your I just went up to be generous because I said we were grading on the Marvel scale. <laughs> on the Marvel scale. Well, it's it's last time I checked, it was sitting about 95 on Rotten Tomatoes. Not that, that doesn't that, bother me. Yeah, well, not that it makes a difference. That's no. a that's very much a Marvel bump and a Spider-Man bump. Yep. Um, and I don't trust most of those people anyway because it's like uh, – you ask them like what they liked or whatever, and then they're like, "Oh, the emotion of having uh, Toby Maguire and Garfield back," and it's like, "That's why it's a a ninety five, like, I, huh?" The same people who re- rate Shang Chi at a ninety six oh, or whatever, dude. like, yeah, oh brother. My gosh. This on. is this is way better than Shang Chi, way, 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 way better. Yes. Um. Yeah, man. I that that's all I got. We can. That's we, all I got yeah. too. Um. Uh. Yeah. Okay, well, till next time, guys. All right. Bye. I gotta find the record stop.